Hello Trout in the Classroom participants. Welcome to this week's Trout in the Office update video. Our, our TIO Trout are all looking extremely happy and extremely healthy. And they're all pretty active right now because they have learned that since I am here, they might potentially get some food. One interesting thing to note is that when I remove the foam lid off of this aquarium, notice how most of the fish dart right up to the surface. And that is because they have learned that when this happens, there's potentially some food on the way. We still have our one abnormally large trout, and it's actually right here, front and center. And that fish is just so much larger when compared to the other fish. Not to take away from the other rainbow trout, they're all growing extremely well, and it'll be exciting to see how they progress through the coming weeks. Our water quality parameters are all looking really good. Our pH is staying stable at 8.2. Ammonia and nitrites are at zero parts per million, and our nitrates are at about 40 parts per million. In this week's update video, I wanna talk about another water quality parameter, and that's dissolved oxygen. So most fishes are gill breathing, and actually require oxygen that's dissolved into the water to be able to breathe. They're not like us, they can't breathe the atmospheric oxygen that's at a way higher content when you compare it to water. There are some fishes that can breathe atmospheric O2, uh, and they're within the lung fishes. So, how do we ensure that we have enough dissolved oxygen in our aquarium for our trout? When we put the water in this aquarium, we're actually confining that water to the dimensions of our aquarium. So we're decreasing the surface area that's exposed to that atmospheric oxygen. So we're decreasing the amount of atmospheric oxygen that can dissolve or yeah, dissolve into that water. So we try to help it along in a couple different ways. We've got our air stone, also known as a bubbler. What this does, it sends all those fine, or those smaller diameter bubbles up towards the surface, and the expulsion of those bubbles agitates the surface, increasing the surface area that's exposed to that atmospheric oxygen so we can get more dissolved oxygen into our water. We also have the outflow of our filter set high above the water surface. And you can see this really agitates the surface of the water, which is essentially does the same thing as our bubbler. So it increases the surface area that's exposed and we get more dissolved oxygen in the water. You might attribute this to some of Pennsylvania's wild trout streams that occur throughout the whole entire state. You see little waterfalls and that water's flowing really good and you have more dissolved oxygen in those streams available for these trout. We also have our chiller set to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So cold water actually has a higher dissolved oxygen content when compared to warm water. For trout, you want a high dissolved oxygen content. Typically, you want that to be at 9 milligrams per liter or higher. In our TIO trout, for our TIO trout, the dissolved oxygen content is at about 10 milligrams per liter. The reason that cold water has a higher dissolved oxygen content is that when the water is cold, those water molecules actually vibrate a lot slower. When you start to heat that water up, those water molecules move around a lot faster and that can actually drive the dissolved oxygen out of the water. Some other things naturally that can occur to decrease the dissolved oxygen level occur through runoff where you have fertilizer coming from a farm field or um, if you fertilize your lawn and that fertilizer ends up in the watershed, that fertilizer not only does it promote the growth of those crops or of your lawn, it promotes the growth of aquatic vegetation as well. Now, that vegetation can add dissolved oxygen to the water through photosynthesis, as that oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. However, too much aquatic vegetation can actually deplete the dissolved oxygen in the water um, at night when, that, when those plants aren't photosynthesizing. Also, as those plants die, um, it increases the level of bacteria that's in the water, and that actually takes up a lot of oxygen as well. This is why you can see dissolved oxygen levels fluctuate in a system that has a lot of aquatic vegetation. So that's going to do it for this week's update. Stay tuned for next week's.